In today's GLP-1 news, we'll look at Eli Lilly's groundbreaking terzepatide study showing a 94% reduction in diabetes risk, a new study suggesting GLP-1s might help people drink less, and how Metsera is innovating with oral drugs and injectables. Plus, we'll explore how Hershey's, that's right, Hershey's chocolates, is adapting as GLP-1s begin to shake up snack sales. Stay tuned for the whole story. Welcome to the Downsize News. It's Monday, November 18th, and we're excited to share the latest on GLP-1 medications. I'm Lorraine Durham, and I've lost over 50 pounds using compounded trisepatide. That's the same ingredient that's in like Zebbound and Manjaro. And I'm Christopher Durham, and I've shed 84 pounds with these medications as well. Today, we're covering everything you need to know about GLP-1s, Manjaro, Zebbound, Wagovia, Ozempic, trisepatide, semaglutide, and today we'll learn about a few more. Before we get started, a quick reminder, we're not doctors. While we're passionate about GLP-1s and weight loss, always consult a qualified healthcare professional before starting any medication or treatment. And don't forget to join us for Downsized Live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we dig into your questions and connect with you, our amazing community. And while you're here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Now let's get into today's news and explore what's happening in the world of GLP-1. Story number one, a new study shows GLP-1 medications may help people drink less. The study comes... There we go. The study comes from the University of Eastern Finland and Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Researchers look at semaglutide and liraglutide, which are drugs used to treat obesity and diabetes. They found fewer hospital visits for people with alcohol use disorder, or AUD, who took these drugs. The medications reduced hospitalizations for alcohol-related issues and even performed better than nat- than and even performed better than naltrexone, a drug already approved for AUD. While naltrexone lowers alcohol-related hospital visits by 14%, GLP-1 drugs did even better. Hospital visits for physical illnesses also dropped. Semaglutide reduced them by 22%, liraglutide by 21%, and AUD drugs by 15%. So their semaglutide's outpacing everything. However, these drugs didn't seem to lower hospitalizations for attempted suicide. Patients have reported drinking less after starting GLP-1 medications, and scientists took notice. Marku Latinvo, one of the researchers, said, Our study suggests GLP-1s may help treat alcohol and substance use disorders. These results are exciting, but research is needed. Randomized trials will help confirm if GLP-1s can be used to treat alcohol use disorders. For now, it's another hopeful sign for those of us using GLP-1s. These medications might do more than help with obesity and diabetes. They could support better mental and physical health, too. So, I mean, we've heard a couple of stories about this impacting alcohol. Yeah, I couldn't drink when I was first started the medication. It made me physically ill. Like, I couldn't even drink a glass of wine. It just just tasted disgusting. It tasted like poison. I didn't want it. And I was, you know, social drinker, drinking wine pretty on a weekly basis. So, Mm -hmm. and then to go from that to like repulsed by it was (laughs) quite a shock. Well, I'm curious because I never drank as much as you did, but (laughs) you were repulsed, but today, a year later, are you still repulsed by it? No. So now I've been on maintenance for three or four months and I guess it's evened out. So, whereas before, I definitely could not have more than one glass or even a whole mm-hmm. glass. Now I can have one, and it's fine. Sometimes two, and that's fine, but not. I don't feel like I want more than that. So, it's really helped me to maybe break a bad habit, break a cycle. I don't know. Well, so a lot of people talk about food noise. We've both talked about it extensively. I mm-hmm. wonder, is there such a thing as alcohol noise? Probably. I mean, those those same voices in my head (laughs) that were telling me to eat all the time at five o'clock were certainly telling me it was wine time at five o'clock. So, uh, Lorraine Chardonnay. Yeah, I don't really hear those uh, like I used to. So, I don't know if it's part of the same center of the brain that, you know, they, they say that this works on the addiction center of the brain. It was definitely addicted to food, probably also addicted to wine. Would not be surprised. There was a lot of Chardonnay in our life. Well, and especially 2020, everybody, everything was shut down. Everything was terrible and sat around and drank most every night. 
I just that cooked. wasn't good for I me. made biscuits. Well, and we both gained 20 pounds. But I made good biscuits and mashed potatoes. There was a lot of starch. There was a lot of carbs. Yeah. Anyway, story number two. Hems and Hearns has introduced a new tool for, patient, for patients using GLP-1 medications. The tracker is designed to monitor shortages of these weight loss and diabetes drugs. With the new tracker, Hems and Hers allows patients to report shortages in their area. They can share their location and the specific brand of medication they cannot find. Hems and Hers plans to gather this information and share updates. Their goal is to show the FDA that supply issues are ongoing. Andrew Dedham, the CEO of Hems and Hers, said that over 80,000 users on their platform have reported problems getting these medications. The number is growing every day. Dudham also pointed out that drug manufacturers are still struggling to meet demand. Large wholesalers like McKesson and Cardinal Health agree that there are long supply, long-term supply concerns. I think we all know that. This move comes after the FDA took trisepatide off the shortage list, backpedaled after a court filing, and is currently reviewing the medication status. The FDA recently removed trisepatide, the active ingredient in Manjaro, from its shortage list, it is still evaluating semaglutide products from Novo Nordisk. The move also follows a similar initiative by telehealth competitor Roe. In May, Roe launched the GLP-1 Supply Tracker, a free tool providing real-time insights on shortages and supply alerts. Patients can check availability, share their experiences, and submit shortage reports to the FDA. Patients deserve better, said Zachariah Ritano, co-founder and CEO of Roe. We built this tracker to help all patients navigate the shortage and find the GLP-1 medications they need. Roe's tracker uses nationwide supply data, user reports, and updates from the FDA drug shortage list. The tracker is an effort to help patients who are using GLP-1s to treat the disease of obesity. It highlights the continued challenges in accessing these medications despite official declarations about supply improvements. These tools are only as good as the user data that is input. So I think we've gone on these trackers before and mm -hmm. we've put in our local zip code and got very little to zero. Well, if there's data out there. The on get, the how much Eli uh, mm -hmm. Lilly is supplying? It exists. The data is out there. Unfortunately, the FDA doesn't actually access that either. I mean, why don't they just access that? That would tell them if it's in shortage Because right or not. now the FDA only says, manufacturer, are you out? And the manufacturer says, eh, that would be I bad for know. our stock. Yeah. So probably not. Yeah. I mean, they move on. Anyway, this is another telehealth provider trying to do something about it. Obviously, they're all trying to protect their business and their customer base. They don't want to be in shortage or they'll have a challenge selling these products. So not a huge surprise. Story number three, the, um, it's all about Metzera's big move in the GLP-1 innovation. The company is moving fast. They're starting a 16-week trial on MET-097i. Results are expected in early 2025, if all goes well. Phase three trials could begin soon after. Investors are taking notice with big names like Wellington Management and Fidelity joining the latest funding round. Metzera has raised over $500 million in total. That's a lot for such a young company. Metzera is also preparing for the future in October. It teamed up with Amnil Pharmaceuticals. Amnil will supply Metzera's products in the U.S. and Europe. They'll also handle some emerging markets. Metzera isn't stopping with one drug. They're working on an oral GLP-1 called MET-097. They also have MET-233i, a once-a-month injectable amylin an analog. Both could help treat obesity and overweight. That Sarah's library of hormone-based drugs could lead to even more options. CEO Whit Bernard is optimistic. He says they now have three drugs in clinical trials. He believes their technology could set a new standard. If that's true, Metzera could become a big name in the fight against obesity. Now, Metzera's problem is funding, right? They don't have the whole backbone that a, no, a Lilly and a Novo Nordisk. Well, it sounds like they're getting do. funding from yeah. major players because they realize that this is a billions dollar industry. If a new player comes to market, a lot of people want to get in on yeah. that. And they may be in a space <laughs> where, honestly, they want to sell the whole company. A lot of people will build companies like this and say, please buy us and get numbers. And I know, I think even this morning, there were some reports that maybe there was some 
bone loss with some of these medications. So we'll have to dive a little deeper into what Met Sarah is doing and report back to you on that. Uh, in our next story, here's the latest from iconic American chocolate maker Hershey. The company says GLP-1s are having a small effect on their sales. Hershey CEO Michelle Buck shared this during a call about the recent financial results. It's funny how a lot of these food manufacturers are blaming things on GLP-1s, aren't isn't it? Uh, as we know, Your clients are eating a lot less. It turns out it might actually be the GLP ones. Yeah, I mean, is it? As mm -hmm. we know, GLP ones make people feel full faster and reduce cravings. The, that's changing how we shop for food and snacks. Fewer candy purchases and smaller basket sizes are part of the trend. Buck called the impact mild so far, but said Hershey is paying close attention. The manufacturer's data shows people on GLP ones aren't cutting out chocolate completely. They're just buying less. Hershey is working on adapting their products to fit these new habits. I have an idea for Hershey. Add protein. Please don't. <laughs> Make a It'll taste terrible. Hershey bar. Please don't. It'll the taste terrible. The company faced other challenges this quarter. Oh, Snickers did it. And it tastes terrible. Are they part terrible. of Hershey? That Snickers They're thing Mars. is horrible. The, their earnings dropped sharply and sales were slightly lower than last year. Rising cocoa prices and cautious consumer spending added to the pressure. When asked about GLP-1s, Buck said the drugs aren't the main reason for slower candy sales. Instead, tighter budgets lead consumers to make fewer shopping trips and prioritize essentials. Still, Hershey knows the growing popularity of these medications could mean more considerable changes ahead. This past Wednesday, Eli Lilly shared groundbreaking results from a three-year study on Monjaro and Zetbound, also known as Terzepatide, that Lorraine and I have both been taking. The Surmount 1 trial showed that these GLP-1 medications offer long-term benefits for weight loss and diabetes prevention. Good to know. Uh, the study followed adults with prediabetes and obesity or overweight for 176 weeks. Participants who took weekly trisepatide injections achieved an average weight loss of 22.9% on the 15 milligram dose. Even more impressive, nearly 99% of these individuals remained free of type 2 diabetes by the end of the study. Compared to the placebo group, where 13.7% of participants developed type 2 diabetes, only 2.4% of those on terzepatide were diagnosed. This represents a 94% reduction in diabetes risk. Pretty impressive. Dr. Anya Jastrobolf, director of the Yale Obesity Research Center, emphasized the significance of these results. She noted that patients not only lost a substantial amount of weight, but also maintained these results for over three years while greatly reducing their risk of diabetes. Eli Lilly's Jeff Emick highlighted the effectiveness of trisepatide, explaining that only nine patients need treatment to prevent one case of type 2 diabetes. The study also showed that about half of the diabetes prevention benefits were linked directly to weight loss caused by the medication. Beyond weight and diabetes, terzepatide improved other health markers, including blood sugar control, cholesterol, blood pressure, and overall quality of life. These results underscore the potential of GLP-1 medications to transform health outcomes for people fighting obesity. So... More good news, Hunter's Epitaph. A new study suggests semaglutide may also help with knee pain. For those of us battling the disease of obesity, this is big news. Semaglutide was originally made to help people with type 2 diabetes manage blood sugar, but it's also proven effective for weight loss, and now researchers are finding more potential benefits. This list of benefits just goes on and on. I know. This study, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, examined people with obesity and knee osteoarthritis. The results showed semaglutide reduced knee pain and improved mobility. Knee osteoarthritis is a common condition that causes pain and makes daily activities harder. It's often linked to obesity because extra weight adds stress to the knees. Losing weight can help, but it's not always easy. That's where semaglutide can make a difference. In the study, 407 participants were split into two groups. One group took semaglutide and the other took a placebo. Both groups received counseling on diet and exercise. After 68 weeks, the semaglutide group lost about 13% of their body weight on average. The placebo group lost about 3%. The pain relief was impressive. People taking semaglutide reported a 14-point drop in knee pain on a 0 to 100 scale. For comparison, similar studies focusing on diet and exercise alone often show only a small drop in pain. 
Even common pain medications like anti-inflammatories and opioids don't achieve this level of relief. Semaglutide may work by reducing joint stress through weight loss. Some studies suggest it has anti-inflammatory effects or helps protect cartilage from damage. While these findings are exciting, it's important to note that the drug maker funded the study, so more independent research is needed. The study had limitations. Most participants were white women, so it might not reflect everyone with obesity and knee osteoarthritis. It also excluded people taking opioids for pain. Semaglutide isn't a miracle cure, but for patients using GLP-1s to treat the disease of obesity, it's another reason to feel hopeful about the possibilities. I wonder why they only studied women, 408 women. Who knows? Who knows? So you have knee pain. What do you think about this whole study? So I've had knee pain since I was in first grade. I had a cyst in my knee removed in first grade, so I have a scar across the entire back of my knee. I haven't taken semaglutide, so I can't speak to that specifically. Terzepatide, I don't know where terzepatide starts and the weight loss ends. Is the medicine doing something to help the pain or is simply I don't know. the weight loss I mean, I don't know. causing I a reduction? In I pain. certainly feel like it's reduced inflammation mm -hmm. to some extent, which would help my knee because my knee has hurt for decades. Mm -hmm. But probably not carrying around 80 pounds was better for it too. So, I mean, I used to know I would have a hard time you know, walking up steps very often. That hurt a lot. Thinking about that one to zero to a hundred scale, if your pain was a hundred before mm -hmm. starting this journey, what is it now? Is it cut you it know, in half? I don't cut it. In it's hard for me to say because quarter? I don't really remember a time when my knee didn't hurt. Does it hurt right now? Yeah. Does it hurt as much as it hurt no. a year ago? But I mean, I had surgery in first grade. No, I, my, I understand. And a full yeah. leg body, you know, cast that yeah. had a strap holding it up because I was too little to hold the, no. the full leg cast up. Or the pumpkin. So, I mean, my, I don't, I don't know where zero and a hundred is because it's always been there. I guess I was thinking if it's always at a hundred, what is it at now? Uh, I would say it was all, it was 90% of the time manageable, but it might've been at 50 on any given day. Mm-hmm. The weather was bad. If we had been on a hike or done a lot of activities, it would hurt more. Mm -hmm. Today, what is it? Maybe a 10 or 15 hmm. on a daily basis. So it's a lot better. It's a lot better. You know, I mean, I basically run up and down steps on cruise ships and water slides and all that. And it didn't hurt me the next day, which hmm. is a good thing. Interesting. So I don't know. We'll see. So that wraps up today's edition of the Downsized News. We hope you found the updates helpful and insightful as you navigate your own GLP-1 adventure. And while you're here, don't forget to check out our Downsized store at thedownsized.org where you'll find GLP-1 companion products and more to support your adventure. We are Amazon affiliates, so when you click those Amazon links, we do make a small commission. And watch out, there might be a Black Friday Amazon video coming up in the next week or so. Before we sign off, if you've enjoyed following the adventure Lorraine and I are on and want to stay updated with real stories, insights, and tips about GLP-1s, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss our latest updates and live streams. Your support helps us grow and continue sharing valuable content with those of us battling the disease of obesity. I'm Lorraine Durham. And I'm Christopher Durham. And we are the downsized.